For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Tell you guys a bit of a kind of pitching video on a new product from Outdoor Revolution. So with me today, I've got the Outdoor Revolution Oxygen Free Inflatable Windbreak. So we kind of go through the pitching process and show you how simple it really is to pitch. Uh, and also kind of give you a bit of a better understanding of how you need to pitch it, to be fair. So first thing we'll do is obviously just empty the bag itself out. The joy of kind of the oxygen in many ways is that uh, you've got three panels that are essentially all individual. So what you find is actually you can kind of add additional panels on or pump them up or change the location. And with, if you wanted more kind of information throughout the video, we have got a separate kind of review video on the actual uh, windbreak itself. And we kind of, sort of take you a little bit of a tour of it just to kind of give you a bit more of a better understanding. So all I'm going to initially do is open up the three panels just like so. One thing is worth mentioning is actually there, a manual pump is not supplied with the actual windbreak itself. It is kind of an optional extra. The reason behind that in many ways is just because naturally with an inflatable product, they assume you've got like a inflatable windbreak or tent or uh, awning or something to kind of go with it. So there's no real need to supply you one where you might potentially already have one. So, <laughs> thank you. So what I'm doing now is just kind of feeding the vol valves in. So on the windbreak itself, you have kind of a Boston valve. So it's a really nice, simple way to go and go. Gets the air in really efficiently, but also allows you to get the air out. Each individual windbreak has its own kind of uh, valve, which you would screw to sort of deflate, as well as pump it up from that single point. So all we're doing now, is very quickly pump up each individual panel, we'll then connect the panels together, and then put them in position as we kind of see fit, really. Seven PSI is all you really need, so it's not really a high pressure system. And like I said, as you can see there, it doesn't really require an awful lot of pumping, to be honest. Okay. You can buy an electric pump to kind of do it for you if you wanted to, but really because it's just so much, it's quite a minimal amount of air that goes into it, there's not overly much need. Here we go. Let's get that valve off. There are little caps which you can just put in after you finish pumping it. That almost acts as a second seal, just to make sure that any air doesn't come out. There is kind of a one-way valve on the actual kind of the Boston valve. What you kind of find about that is generally that it only gives you kind of a pressure reading on say a slow downstroke. As that kind of seal to the valve is open and it's got backward pressure to read what that pressure may be. So now we've inflated it, what we can quite easily kind of do together is then connect them. Basically they connect via a beading that's located down either side. Where it's easier to do it from a kind of a vertical standpoint, I find it personally probably is. The reason I say this is because then you've got gravity work on your side. You can get two panels together like so. Just kind of butt them up. Put one initial bit of beading on one side, one on the other, and then drop them down together, pushing the base together. And then you've almost got two halves to kind of keep the pack size nice and small. So once we're on that point there, that will kind of almost freestand. You put that at sort of like a, a nice right angle, or being not massively a windy day, that will kind of sit into a situation. So again, it makes life a lot easier when you're kind of wanting to peg it out. You can kind of position it beforehand and then do so afterwards. So we'll just repeat the same process in terms of adding it on. Just feed them directly down together, being careful not to catch the guy lines directly in. Now they come as a panel of three initially, but you can buy additional panels as you see fit. Or of course, if you wanted uh, to get additional three panels, it'd work out better to buy two wind brakes in completely. So now we kind of want to arrange our position that we want to put it in, depending on kind of what shape we want. If we want to create like a little enclosure, we'll go into there. From this point here, what we're going to do is kind of peg the base, get it all looking nice and kind of sharp, and it allows it to sit properly. So peg it that way. 
So it uses Aldo Rev's uh, 240 HD material. So it's a really nice, strong, robust fabric designed to kind of match their kind of um, their T ranges of awnings. But it's something that, to be honest, doesn't have to be, you don't have to have an Aldo Revolution product if you like the concept of the windbreak. You know, it's fairly universal. It's a fairly kind of non-offensive color, shall we say. We had this at a dog show the other day and then people were absolutely loving it. So again, you don't have to have a, an awning at such at all. From this point here, what we can then do is just peg the guide points out. That's to give it an additional bit of stability. So you want to kind of come off a bit of an angle and go either way. Once you kind of got either side done, it kind of gives it a bit more about and braces. By having kind of an art kind of um, design, like I have here, you find each of them has a bit more support individually. When you've got two coming off one another, I personally quite like to kind of use the same anchoring points. Just means it's less hassle. Ideally, you actually want to peg them directly over, but you could use one one side and one internally if you had it dead flat. It's only because we're kind of using, like I said, this kind of curvature kind of position that we can get away with it. But if we want to make it a bit more sturdy and pull one of the panels away from one another, we can do that as well. Now they've got an another guy rope, normally it's two to every single point or thereabouts. So again, it still gives you the option to peg internally if you wanted to. If you're quite canny and you still want the internal space, you can almost bring it directly down the inside of the panel like this. And it still gives it a good level of support, but not sort of infringing on any sort of internal space you've got here. We have got kind of a separate video about um, sort of a little review video going a bit more into detail about kind of the product. But as you see, that's kind of a nice, easy, simple concept of it. And you can add on panels depending on how big you want it to be. That's kind of the pitching process. If you want more information, check the link below this video, take you straight through to our website, where we've got things like pack sizes, pack weights, floor dimensions, um, obviously the price importantly, and then the price of additional panels as you need to. But I think very simple, very easy. Certainly there's not something new to the market, but a different kind of style, should we say, and from a color scheme and price point, I think it works quite nicely. But yeah, but by all means, let us know if you need any more help or information. That is our little video slash, well, our little pitching video on the Outer Revolution Auction Free Inflatable Windbreak.